Hello everyone, welcome. We are going to talk tonight about a light romantic comp no, we're gonna talk about Angel's Egg. <laughs> Moro Oshii's 1985 OVA, Angel's Egg. And to sort of establish things a little bit, um, uh, only two years before, Moro Oshii had invented the OVA with Dalos and had essentially established the, the format of selling anime direct to consumer, of just advertising it, and folks would just buy it directly out of a, a magazine or advertisements or whatever. And so you just see the ad and it would say, you know, send... 5,000 yen here, and we will mail you a tape. Um, that can start with Dallas only two years beforehand. The year, uh, a year later, 1984, uh, he released Ursa Yatra, the movie Two Beautiful Dreamers, which is a, uh, an odd um, sort of meditation on reality versus fantasy. And then a year later, he releases this thing. <laughs> uh, Angel's Egg, which is... Um, I, I think I said in a tweet, I would argue this is symbolism, the anime. Um, it's just <laughs> yeah. weird visual imagery kind of for, for a little over, over an hour. So and I say that because I, and um, also uh, it was a collaboration between Oshii and Yoshitaka Amano, character designer for Final Fantasy and Viper 100D and a bunch of other stuff. But Amano was not very well known yet. Um, he'd done a few things, but he wasn't like a big household name among Otaku yet. Um, so... It feels to me like you can see Angel's Egg as being this sort of progression from Dallas, which is a pretty standard sci-fi action story, to Beautiful Dreamers, which is a bit more unreal, to Angel's Egg kind of going the extreme opposite direction of saying, okay, how artsy-fartsy can we get with the OVA market? Like, how, how far can we push it? Yes. <laughs> yeah, to the extreme! Um, because... I don't know about you guys, when I first started watching Angel's Egg, uh, and, you know, the, the first time, I had to turn it off because I was like, oh, no. Oh, this is, nothing's happening. Oh, what is this going to be? Um, and then when I came back to it and realized, oh, okay, this is an art piece, I could really appreciate it. But it it, it definitely comes across very aggressively arty from from the get-go. Yeah, right. Yeah. The, um, I had been aware. I, I had not sit, watched the movie until we decided to watch it for, mm. for tonight. Um, but I've been aware of the movie. Of course, I'm um, I'm an Oshi fan. Mm. You know, with Pat Labor and and um, Ghost in the Shell. Mm -hmm. And um, so I knew about it, but I never <clears throat> got around to actually watching it. Mm -hmm. I've, and I've heard that it was artsy, um, and which was actually for me kind of fine because I actually live where I live in Baltimore, I, I live in close proximity of two art house theaters. So I, mm. I, I watch, watch a lot of art house. So this is definitely art house anime. Mm. Uh, for those of you who are thinking about watching this, just know what you're getting into, which is, this is, you're, you're going to have to think through this. And no matter how you are with art house movies, sometimes these movies you have to see once or twice. I actually watched it twice in the past week mm. to make sure that my thought process which is probably going to be different than yours and probably going to be different than yours because this thing is so whatever it is. Um, <laughs> well, as long as I you're mean, thinking it's insane, yeah. it's fine. We're, yeah. we're all on the same page. Um, and and, and, <laughs> and it's kind of true. Um, but, you know, for me, when I when I also, in between watching it, like like the first time, like you, Brad, I, 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 Brad, I had to say, okay, I got to slow it, kind of, kind of dial it back a little bit and, just kind of go okay what do i think this means what what is this going on so i was used to the slow pace mm. so i didn't have an issue with the pacing i didn't have an issue with the animation i really love the animation actually mm -hmm. um but uh i had to watch it a second time because i was just like okay i gotta look this film up i gotta look up oshi i gotta look up all this stuff because mm -hmm. i'm just not the the pieces there were pieces there that were, were definite to, to me mm -hmm. at any rate mm -hmm. and then i had to actually look at sometimes you have to look at the creators and just kind of go try to at least understand what was going through their minds when they were making it mm -hmm. and then Oshi made the two comments that that kind of went ah for me and then at mm -hmm. the second moment at the very same time going ah oh, you know, I wish they didn't say that <laughs> and it was, it was what it was 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 that he the first statement was um the for himself saying i'm not really sure what this means 
Mm, mm -hmm. and and yeah. and he said that and then the sec followed with he goes this can be the interpretation of whoever views this ah, mm -hmm. um so anything that i come up with that i might think that this might be is kind of negated by those two comments anyway <laughs> so this really i mean because it, you know for me you for me this is the story of his loss of faith in christianity mm think that this movie was honestly i think was his last gasp at trying to maybe this movie will save me and i'll stay a christian mm. and it didn't so he wasn't and i think i mean that's i'm kind of putting it in a nutshell but sure. um mm. you know but it, it was just but and then you know having to wrestle with the fact of i don't really know what i make and i was kind of like okay to me that's a little bit of a cop-out sure maybe because it, because he doesn't he doesn't discuss at all about his de departure from Christianity. Mm -hmm. He doesn't, he doesn't talk anything about that. He, mm -hmm. and he won't or hasn't or ever will. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think this is the best to me. I think this is the best explanation you're going to get. <laughs> and, and Good honestly, uh, yeah. And, and, um, but I, I, but I was like sitting there thinking that was a cop out. That's a cop out because, you know, when you, make something when you create something when you write something you know you might start in one way and come out another sure or you may not know what you're getting into when mm -hmm. you're starting it but at some point there becomes structure and mm -hmm. uh, a work and there's something that goes into it so there's mm -hmm. definitely we may never know what it is right <laughs> I mean, to be honest with this movie we well, may never know what it is and i could be totally wrong but it's kind of like to me it's kind of like when I look back at my drunk poetry from college, I go, <laughs> clearly there was something going on in my head at that time. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but, you know, so we get there. So anyway, I, you know, start off the discussion just to say, I, yeah. personally, I think it, this is the part. Well, and I, I contrast that with the creators of Serial Experiments Lane, who said um, that they went into Lane with a firm plan about what was going on you know, explanations for everything that happens in that show. And they had a whole kind of Bible, but they they made it such that um, they said, you know, people can have different interpretations and that's fine. And so, and, you know, right. uh, so they said, you know, we, we don't expect you to have our view of what's actually happening in there. We want you to piece it together however you want to. Um, but there's still a logic to it. <laughs> there's, there's still right. some plan yeah. there, which, which helped a lot. Um, I don't know. I, I find that Angel's Egg, like a lot of high art, is so he heavy with symbolism. That you can interpret it almost every yeah. way. Uh, you know, it, it just mm -hmm. kind of, if you want to see this one way, you want to see this uh, another way. But it is certainly a, an, um, it is certainly a story about people seeking things, right? It yeah. is. It is all about the search. Yeah, yeah, uh, and that is a theme that is all the way through, and is is kind of, you know, uh, never really resolved. It is just searching all the way yeah. through that story. Um, John, what were your like initial impressions? Well, the, initially, I'd heard about it with Triad mm. uh, a few years ago, and it, it was in one of those obscure anime movies you may never have heard of. So. I took a screenshot of it mm -hmm. and said, "Okay, I'll give it a wing." Sure. And it was it was like a, you know Saturday <laughs> night, nothing else going on. Mm -hmm. I started watching it. I'm you know I Pizza watched nice. it the whole way through. Okay. Yep. And I just sat back afterwards and said, "What the hell did I do for an hour? <laughs> what is what? What uh, was that? Mm, what what, yes. what was that ending?" Yep. And going uh, back now, the second time to watch it, it's you know there's a lot of things that it never even occurred to me until I sort of looked kind of kind of paid attention more to some of the dark things in the background right. were. like the, you have to watch it. you're right yeah. you have to watch it again. like the yeah. dark image of the ark yeah in mm -hmm. one scene I'm yeah. like wait a minute and <laughs> water. water I'm yeah. like okay I get yeah. you mm -hmm. um walking into the uh the facility with all of the water bottles that were lined right. up up the stairs mm -hmm. When you first walk in, it's through a split in the wall of a giant rib cage, like Jonah and the whale. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> uh, we got a Noah story. Yeah. We got a Jonah and the yeah. whale. Ah, yeah, mm -hmm. starting to see here. His, um, 
I don't know what that thing he carries over his shoulder is supposed to be. The it's more gun. mechanical. Yeah. yeah, but it it never shoots. But it, mm -hmm. I don't, you know, whatever yeah. it is, it's got in the middle of it. In some parts, it looks like a, a face, a little red face, mm -hmm. and then in other parts, it looks like a rose. And I'm like, wait, Rosicrucians, ah, uh, the order of oh. order of Catholic, um, yeah. of Catholic monks, the Rosicrucians, and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, ah, okay, I got, yeah, I'm seeing, <laughs> I'm starting to piece some things together here with what's going on here, mm -hmm. um. And it's an interesting intersection of this, uh, you know, a, another example, Judeo-Christian intersection in an anime yeah, yeah. with the symbolism of the world egg, mm, which yeah, yeah. Jap Japanese right. mythology tradition has the chaotic world egg that holds the seeds to life that breaks mm. open and spreads spreads away. And I think there's a Chinese one called Pangu's, hmm. Pangu's egg, okay. which is a similar sort of thing where you've got the world egg and it it. I think Pongu is he's like a he's like a beast man and he has to with the world egg stand up and push the sky up and push the, the oh, wow. ground down. Mm. And for eighteen thousand years he pushes these things. Each day he gets taller and taller and eventually he becomes the sky and the mountains and everything else that's between heaven and earth. Okay. So it's like this very interesting Eastern mythology that's wrapped in here with the whole world egg thing, and I'm like, Good mm -hmm. night in the morning. <laughs> Um, you see, yeah. it, hmm. and so, you know, so at the very beginning, the first time I watched it and I saw the bird and the egg, and the first thing I thought of was <laughs> literally, and I laughed at myself, because also actually the first part of the music that was playing, which I found very distracting, by the way, mm, yeah. um, was that of uh, the Star Child from 2001. Mm. And hmm. and actually the music where you have the, all the voices rising up and up mm -hmm. and up and up and, and lack of structure that's in two thousand one. Oh yeah, it's very two thousand one. Totally, yeah, right. yeah. So uh, so there was that, but um, and you know it's it and it's funny because when I you brought the pangu and and I didn't even think of that at all mm. uh, until you just said it now. Uh, so I thought that, so I'm going to have to go, oh, God, yeah. <laughs> and because and now I'm going to have to I mean, it that way, because what I was actually looking at was like, okay, each egg is an angel. Hmm. And the girl falls into the ravine and she turns into a woman, which is to me turning into an angel. Hmm. And she lets off all those eggs up mm -hmm. and then they all start growing. So, and you know, the, the ship that comes down, which, me also on the side note looks like from dungeons and dragons you know, the beholder. Eye of the oh yeah absolutely yeah, the <laughs> and and you know comes down and keeps collecting these angels and mm -hmm. bringing it back up mm -hmm. from the the whole of the whole of the ship because uh, that and that scene right there got me and um, at the end with the slow very slow pullback and that's something and I, like, I did not notice the first time around i i, I yeah. my eyes could not understand the you know the visual there it was just you know a yeah. massive land uh, and it wasn't until I rewatched yeah. it that I was like, "Oh, it's a hoe! Oh, of course!" Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now I'm gonna have to look at that because I didn't even I didn't even factor in Eastern uh, um, theology into that at all. So now well, it's just it blended in it. so yeah. nicely. You know, mm -hmm. Water, her her constantly collecting jugs of water mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. water, aqua vita is the water of life. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. And she observes the water in the jug because she's mm -hmm. looking for the purity of the water of life mm -hmm. and that she constantly is collecting this stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, his his uh, part in that, it really felt like, you know, the sort of the difficulty of man mm -hmm. versus faith, where mm -hmm. man wants to control mm -hmm. man wants right. to the tanks rolling through town. Man mm -hmm. is a destructive force. Mm hmm. And man wants to grasp the power that is creation. How do you know it's in the and egg by destroying it? Right. And yeah. destroys creation by his own will. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, mm -hmm. wow, there's a lot to unpack in the whole <laughs> movie there. If you're not just like, watch, if you watch it cold, yeah. you could just walk away from it and be like, that's just screwed up. Mm -hmm. And then you watch it again. <laughs> you're like, again. okay, Ooh. here we go. Now I got to think about all this stuff. <laughs> See, now what I got from that scene of the tanks rolling through mm -hmm was that you know and to me the the cross gun is actually the cross that christ bears mm. See, i thought the guy was was jesus in a movie sure I mean, mm -hmm. and that you know it, of course you know just my interpretation yeah. and he's actually moving through the city 
you know, as if he was walking to the crucifixion. So he's carrying this, mm. this the burden on his shoulder, mm. but he's hitching a ride with the tanks <laughs> to wherever it is that he's going. Mm. But did you notice on the tanks as he's sitting there, the tanks are alive mm. and the and the cords are you, pulsing, you, yeah, you, pulsing, and then and pulsing, and he gets up and it squishes down a little bit. But as soon as he gets off of it, everything rigid. Mm-hmm. Continue on, and I'm just like sitting there going something i don't know what you know? <laughs> and I, I have no idea so i i, I well still and I you were torn know. you were torn about the phallic symbol tree. well I, I was just gonna bring that up that you know Never up mind. until that Never. point i don't think you see a straight line in that movie um i think it's all curves all the way up until you mm. suddenly see the giant long hard things um coming into the you know into the city um, you know, one over the other, and they deposit this this yeah. guy. But everything else that has been very, you know, very encircling, very nurturing, very classic sort of female mm-hmm. imagery. You know, the, the girl holding the egg uh, in a way that makes her look pregnant, right? Very, very classic. Oh yeah, sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, ah, so which I thought she was a she was a nice um, a nice metaphor for Gaia, mm-hmm. the Earth Mother. Mm-hmm. Well, and in- that you know. The world egg, Gaia giving birth to life on oh, Earth. Oh yeah, definitely. So and, and you know she's concept. young enough to be to be innocent, you know, to be the yep. the, the classic sort of thing. I, but like I saw that that initial image, you know, um, zooming in on the egg with the, the bird inside, and simple explanation is that this is uh, a dream of the world egg, because you zoom in and you see it sort of twitch as though mm-hmm. it is dreaming. Yeah. And then you see all this happening. Um, so this could all just be sort of one dream happening, uh, which gets into the, you know, uh, is everything just a dream, Arma. right, of all right. that stuff. Arma. The yeah. dream time of the aboriginal uh, uh, concepts. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and it all comes around to the, the potatoes and Attack on Titan, right? They're, they're very egg-like, very egg-shaped. Yeah. Everything, everything up together. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> the potatoes the attack on wow okay i missed that part right yeah you know they're, they're mm. egg-shaped mm. and that's the, that, that is the world is the potato of attack on titan um uh-huh. you know, see <laughs> everything makes sense it's it's very wow. deep these shows are very deep um, all comes together yeah uh yeah no it's, it's interesting and um what i also find interesting is how the movie kind of refuses to give you any firm explanations for anything you know, the girl never tells you what she's doing with the egg. The guy never tells you right. where he's from. It's all just very much, you know, we are here observing this thing. Um, well, she she keeps asking him, Dalai Lama, who mm-hmm. are you? And he never, never answers her. Mm-hmm. He just he just looks at her with dead eyes. And he's yeah. It's in the egg. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, I love at the end, he, you know, he says, okay, and who are you? As she's sleeping. You know, fair question. No. <laughs> um, which I think does raise kind of that, that fundamental um, conflict, which is that, um, and I think it gets back to what you're saying there, John, um, you know, he comes into the situation and from his perspective, you know, yeah, she's holding, nurturing this egg. What gives her the right to be the, the nurturer of the egg, right? How does he know that she deserves it other than the fact that she has first possession? Um, she's just this little girl who found this egg. Um, I couldn't help thinking watching it, you could so easily tell this story from this other perspective where he knows the egg is dangerous and he's just waiting to get it away from her so that he can crack it and break it open. It would be a very reasonable uh, uh, turn of events in all of this, uh, but it's very much not how right. it's presented to us. If it had been a dragon's egg, then we easily could have just resolved right. the whole entire thing in like five minutes. Exactly. <laughs> Unless it's Smith's Kobayashi, then it's not. That's not. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's one of the tough things. Is I, I think this is a movie that is so pregnant, haha, with symbolism <laughs> that you can you can kind of go any way with it in a lot of ways. Uh, that there's just. Yeah. You know, well, uh, I think I think certainly by the time you get to the end, you've got all these all the life symbolism. I mean, mm-hmm. the grain of rice by the end is is quintessential life in in mm-hmm. Eastern culture, yeah. um, and it's just it's very interesting to think of how how what was the process of trying to write this <laughs> that it it well it you know what I mean? You've got the direction, you've got what's going on on the screen, you have a kind of story, but mm-hmm. it's like how did you? 
you know what I mean? How are you talking to your staff about this? I need this scene to look like that. Well, what are they doing? Well, that's not important. <laughs> it just has to look like yeah. this. Just throw like, harpoons oh. at shadows. It'll be yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the fisherman, fisherman trying to control nature mm -hmm. again, you know, harpooning things. Like, okay. That's, and that's where I say that it's kind of, to me, it's a kind of a cop out where he says, yeah. well, I kind of don't know where I'm going with this, or I don't know what this is, <laughs> or, you know, whatever it was. And, and the thing it is, is that, you know, there had to have been a storyboard <laughs> and engagement. Right? Mm -hmm. There's a storyboard here, and, and, and you're right. I can just see the staff, the animation staff, just going, coming home that night and just going, give me the whiskey. I just, dude, just, I don't know. What are you making? I, I don't know, honey. I don't know. <laughs> So what are you guys working on? Uh, the ah, acid I fever think. dream of a madman? <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of blue. That's all I can say. <laughs> a lot of blue. Um, but, but there is some structure to this. I, so I think that there absolutely. is something there, but it, we may never know. Well, and that's the thing. Like, if you've seen Cat Soup, know. you know, Cat Soup is yeah. very sort of stream of consciousness. And that is something where I can totally see them saying, okay, we're going to do this scene and this scene and this scene and whatever. But there is so much repeated symbolism here. And yeah. there's so much that they're kind of coming back to that it's clear that it all um, is meant to tie together. Um, it's kind of like Evangelion, actually, in, 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 a, in a lot of ways, where, you know, you can look at a lot of the imagery of Evangelion, look at a lot of the, the individual shots and scenes, and they seem random. But there's right. enough connective tissue to be like, no, 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 they were going somewhere there. Yeah. And, I mean, this does, I mean, if you put the, all the symbolism together in a, in, a, in a sort of, you know, coherent pile... Mm -hmm. It's there is something there is a storyline going along there, and it's just like, wouldn't it have been nice if you guys had been like, yeah, it's about the world and <laughs> you know mankind and the it's beginning and the context. end of it all. Mm -hmm. You know, the giant ship coming down with all the statues that's representative of of a growing population mm -hmm. of the planet, mm -hmm. and you know it's overcrowded, and you know this this world egg is going to give birth to a new world where it's you know better. And yet, you know, mankind destroys that, and the 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 harbinger of this new, better world ends up on the flying planet representation, and it goes <laughs> off wherever. That's that's God's <laughs> thing, and gone mm -hmm. off, and now you guys are all on your own. Just like the but actor. no, <laughs> but mm. no, that's not obvious. You know, this is like, well, what are you doing to me there? Mm -hmm. I'm because the only thing I could come up with was that this that Noah's Ark failed. And that mm -hmm. the whole of the ship that they, the dude standing on at the end is basically the doom, uh, is basically humanity's doom, mm -hmm. and Jesus is left behind, mm -hmm. and because he doesn't go on the ship with with the other, which are only women, and hey, you know, or, you know, women, and they're put in as statues, or I don't know, it powers God's eye, or, I, whatever that thing is, <laughs> and and, and then all the statues look like Athena for some reason, which they do is except for her, except for the Link little girl, again. Right? yeah, except yeah. for the little girl. Yeah. And um, and so you know, because he does talk about a sort of version of the Noah's Ark at, you know, oh, yeah. at one point. The only real conversation that happens <laughs> in this movie, by Enjoy the way, so, by, by the way, yeah, by the way, all the speaking parts happen in less than like what five minutes. Oh yeah, yeah, little. Um, mm -hmm. But well, they didn't want to pay the voice actors <laughs> for like a lot of dialogue, so yeah. they cut it oh, really boy. short. Really, come short. in for an hour, um, you'll be done. So, Exactly. And like they were doing this in one take, guys. I need ten minutes. <laughs> Done. But you know, like the fishermen who are, mm. you know, supposed to be, you know, um, you know, providers, they they're mm. men and they stay on the hull of the boat. They never move, they never ascend, and they're always doing the same thing over and over again, mm -hmm. which is destroying what the little town that was built on the mm, on yeah. the bottom mm -hmm. of the ship. And you know, and you know, we were talking earlier about, you know, the 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 symbolism of no of of the whale you know, and the whale and, and things like that mm. and i just think personally i think it's just like somehow he came to the conclusion that when god destroyed the world he actually destroyed the world and that there's you know mm. this is yeah man, man is done women are fine jesus you're <laughs> on your own on the bottom of the ship and uh fun with all those water bottles you know i mean it's like now, Steve, you're saying bottom of the ship. I thought that was a grain of rice as it's panning out. No, that's the whole. I, that's if you look at it as it's panning out, you can see the the. You know how it's segmented. Yeah. 
it's just pulling out. Those are rivets, and those are those are plates on the bottom of the ship. That's how that's what it looks like. Is it, you have, it looked to me the way the front, front and a ridge, and the front a part of it was off mm -hmm. was like a grain of rice laying on on a, um, a unknown surface. Mm -hmm. There was like a, a ridge, and there's a ridge in the middle that shows a shadow right. on the other half. So that's kind of what a bottom of a, of a ship looks like. And hmm. so, you know, and if you notice that there's land, there's actual like vegetation and mountains, mm -hmm. but then there's just this clear area, which, and they're all segmented it out. Right. Like, like, like the whole of the ship. So, you yeah, know, those, those Stonehenge type of structures right, that those you see rivets. walk by. Those mm -hmm. are rivets. Interesting. So, um, or <laughs> I, thought, I, I, I thought you were that, looking at an that, unhauled grain of rice, and yeah, I'm like, oh, that makes you know great symbolism yeah. for Asian now, mythology. Mind, too. Yeah, I was going to say. Now keep in mind, that's what I saw. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. That's so the grain of rice has just as much validity as as, as anything else, because mm -hmm. I, you know, who knows? Yeah, yeah we don't but have any direction anyway, from right. the creators of it, so it could <laughs> right. be anything. Right. No, yeah. no hint, no clue. Although I do, I, I had a little bit of a chuckle on mm. so, another side note was uh when he's going in and he's talking about Noah and his hands running up the mm. the tree yeah the tree of life that, yeah. the, the tree of man mm -hmm. remember that in ghost in the shell oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah the movie so that was yeah the movie mm -hmm. it was in the ghost in the shell of the mm -hmm. tank scene battle scene mm -hmm. the tank and the, mm -hmm. the bullets go up mm -hmm. interesting okay yep um uh yeah no totally uh and I, I really I find that a really interesting um, uh, theory because partly because uh, having watched um, Land of the Lustrous, Hoseki like, you no know, Kuni, uh, a little mm -hmm. while ago, yeah. um, the very sort of Buddhist enemy in that is a ship covered in giant statues, um, and yep. I, I do have to wonder if that was a perhaps like a reference back to Angel's Egg. But if that is sort of um, some common visual imagery, something going back to something around this idea that, you know, what, what if the, the eye is Buddhism, basically? You know, humanity is turning to that um, and they are being sort of uplifted into that. Once they um, give up on this world, they ascend to this other way of seeing things uh, mm. with Jesus and Christianity left behind. Basically, um, mm. who knows? <laughs> Again, almost any any interpretation is valid because we don't have anything that directs us one way or the other. Yep, who yeah. ever knows? Um, it's also fun watching something. Yeah, the I could be a Gnostic reference. That's a good point, guts. Um, uh, yeah, I think it's it's also interesting because this is also a a movie with such distinct visual flair you know th that lovely amano style that that you know and one of the, the first shots is that weird sort of mechanical thing that the the guy is standing next to you on the desert while the the eye yep. appears just it's just all yeah. spires and, and and cogs and things that have no apparent purpose but it's just visually fascinating to look at and having that to look at over and over again having this very uh um Rococo European city to look at. Right. Um, well, so, and that's the weird part because you have him with all the mechanically yeah. sharp weird thing. Mm -hmm. You have the tanks which have a mechanically Organic functional part, thing. but also a sort of yeah. biologically squishy. Yeah. And then this very soft European town. <laughs> nice little curves, you know, things. Like, 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 you feel like you should be able to get like a get like a, a soft pretzel and mustard exactly and yes where's my croissant at, in a, in a fish at any minute someone could break out with the sound of music <laughs> no <laughs> actually you know what this movie is you know what? Yeah, you, i think you forgot the, i think you've got something there i mm. think that this is a very very uh odd interpretation of heidi oh it all makes sense yes of course <laughs> yeah mm-hmm Yep, the, the the guy is a reference to her to the grandfather, right? Um, to the grandfather, right? Yep. Because she she's seeking him, but they have a, a tempestuous relationship, right? Um, right? But eventually, like you know, they, they come to something. You know, he he watches over while she sleeps. By the way, for everyone and the who complains, of their relationship is yeah, an egg. Exactly. <laughs> everyone who complains about the elevator sequence in Evangelion needs to watch the sequence of the girl asleep with the fire in Angel's Egg. 
which goes on for like seven uh, minutes, it feels like. Man, and it's just this little flicker. <laughs> <laughs> for this, and so, yeah, and, yeah you're, and you're sitting there. It, it, no, it's so true. And, and you're sitting there, just like going, <laughs> "Is is he gonna do it now? <laughs> is he gonna do the thing? Yeah. Something gonna happen here?" Well, I was trying to figure out behind <laughs> her. There is that circular structure. Yeah. And then something that the way that the curtains are almost looks like a Japanese or Chinese character. Oh, interesting. So I tried to use Google handwriting, mm. and I couldn't get it. I, I don't know mm. what the character is. I don't know whether it's, you know, kanji, is it hiragana, katagana, yeah. whatever it is. But I can't. I couldn't get Google to, to give me an answer to it. So I'm trying all kinds of combinations of the way it looked, and I'm like, this is not – I don't know what this is. Screw you, Westerner. Huh. Not what I expected it to <laughs> translate to. Well, I was I was wondering if it maybe showed up as life, or yeah. or maybe it showed up as death. You know, a single character symbolizing something but can't I, be that easy. Yeah, I I don't know. <laughs> I don't have the tools to be able to figure out what that was. So yeah, it'll either be something you know like circle, you know, very vague, or it'll be you know um, um, NHK news. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, or a Ford Bronco advert. Ford, yeah, 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 Ford, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ford, it's the best. That's what that means. Ah, it, it, it all, it all, all comes right. It's all become clear to me now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, no, I. One of the reasons I love Angel's Egg is because we don't get a lot of this in any medium, right? It, it's pretty rare to get a pure artistic vision for seventy minutes just there on screen, uh, and it is just, I think, a really interesting um uh piece of art and i, I use that that term with yeah. reservation but it is definitely just here here's some art interpret it interpret it see what you see what you think you know? i'd be curious to see it in like a large screen format true because so much Ooh. of it is so yeah. dark mm -hmm. that it i i you know i thought about it like after i started seeing more and more dark parts mm. of it i'm like i wonder if i can adjust the screen yeah. resolution or that's something to point. figure out am i missing something mm -hmm. or is it just you know that's the artsy part of it it's just dark sure yeah. like, <laughs> you have no <laughs> reference to that darkness and you have to kind of fill in the gaps on your own like, actually uh, yeah. um serial women's lane uh, everything comes after lane um they talked about that because they, they did a um a uh what do you call it when you Redo interview the, uh, no when, oh. when, when you go back to the the visuals and rework the visuals um a remaster uh, yes thank you uh they did a, a, a remaster and they were back and they said the thing was um before the you know recently it was really hard to transfer that art onto like tape or onto whatever it would end up being on and preserve all the detail and get all the levels right. So when they remastered Lane, they went back and they just sort of tweaked the the stuff. And there was all this detail in the back of that art, in the, the backgrounds of that show, that no one noticed before because it was it essentially had faded into a solid black color when it was right. you know broadcast on television, basically. And so there was all this interesting you know, visual stuff you could actually understand. Um, and I think that's just kind of one of those inherent things about video transfer that unless you're Francis Ford Coppola and can afford to make everything exactly perfect all the way through, you're going to lose a lot of that detail a lot of, a lot of the time. Which yeah. I had a feeling there had to have been some. Like yeah. they, when they showed the arc up on some structure mm -hmm. with the oh, supports yeah. on it, yeah. There, yeah. I, I, again, I, it could have been just completely black for the purposes of like letting you fill it in. Mm -hmm. But I felt like there probably was some detail <laughs> Somewhere on what it was sitting on. Yeah. That you, you might know, there's something. probably this sign. There's probably this sign somewhere in all the blackness as it just says press pause, read this, all questions answered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just one big list and nobody's been able to find yeah. it. Right. <laughs> no idea. This is what oh, it yeah. means. Or <laughs> it's just this big smiley face with ha ha yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe the comedian smile a car, face. A car, carving in latin that just tells you this film is actually about buying a brand new car <laughs> ford bronco oh, oh no you're not supposed to sneak that in there 
<laughs> I, I, so as I'm watching this, I kind of felt like the the monks in Money Python who are, who are <laughs> walking around going, <laughs> "My head hurts." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my head really hurts. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It it's. I found myself oscillating between two reactions to this movie. One was sort of intense frustration of being unmoored uh, and just having to have it all wash over me. And the other thoroughly enjoying having just um, not having to fit this into my preconceived notions of what was going to happen, where it was go, what everything means. I could just experience and absorb this and know it to be kind of whatever I wanted it to be. That, um, and knowing that there is obviously, again, some, some connections there. Um, but there was something really freeing to having something that is so abstract in that way um, that you're just kind of letting the, the mind make free associations throughout the entire thing of, you know, oh, um, is he Chinese? I don't know. He's got sort of a Chinese sort of, maybe, maybe that's, wired into all this a, Ma a maoist jumpsuit yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> some kind of military dude mm -hmm. also that's the things that oftentimes is nice about sort of the uh the avant-garde artsy fartsy films this you, you know you're, you're gonna give yourself a bigger headache trying to actually figure it out much more much more so <laughs> than just sitting there and being like okay i'm gonna let this experience happen to me mm -hmm. yeah i'll worry about thinking about it later yeah and then of course the brain starts it, trying it, to it, think, it yeah, mm -hmm. it's kind of like a ride. It's it's definitely a ride. Yeah. Um, you don't when you go into something like this. This is when this is when you go. I am used to the twenty six episode structure, or I'm used to the seventy one to ninety six minute structure, mm -hmm. or I'm used to this. And then this movie just kind of just says, "Okay, sit down, relax, pop open a beer or whatever beverage of choice, and just sit back and let it happen because there's nothing you can do about yeah. this at." Yeah, light up a little just something. Just, yeah, just just lean back and enjoy the ride. Um, like I said earlier, I it, it enjoyed greatly the animation and mm. being able to look at. Although I I am wondering about your point about you know playing with contrast and seeing if there's actually mm. any, you know, detail, detail in there. In, yeah, in, in there. So I'm curious to go back and and see that. Um, and I didn't mind that there was no dialogue other than the fact that I had no idea. What yeah, was no, on. it totally worked. Yeah, um, and, and it worked. The only thing I, I think I would do different is the, the soundtrack. I, I, mm. I did not like it. I, I had a hard time with it. And um, I think you could have gone uh. a gothic rap. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could have done, like, you know, like, gross singing would have been preferable yeah. to this, you know. Um, but, I mean, seriously, you know, I, th I think if you wanted to go gothic, I think mm. there's other ways you could have done it. Sure. And, yeah, but did, um, didn't that soundtrack work from the perspective that it just, it was... Unsettling? It was, yeah. I mean, it was just kind of like, it well, was annoyingly odd, mm -hmm. so that you're kind of... <laughs> it left me with a sense of through you know for the first time watching it it left me with a great sense of anticipation at every moment mm. that constantly but, i was waiting for like something really like i got really excited when the fishermen started throwing spears yeah i'm like ah, oh, now we're doing something now something big's gonna happen <laughs> nope. and and, well, yeah. and then i'm like <laughs> and yeah mm. that, no, nothing happened yeah um but i mean at the, i mean there's points to it that make sense uh i guess at the beginning when it's chaotic and you realize that you're going to be going into something chaotic because this is chaotic right mm -hmm. um so there's that but we don't need to have that hammered in through the entire mm -hmm. seven minutes mm -hmm. um you know for you know for the chaos to, to come in you know there's i think there's other ways that you can do it with or not not at all i mean sometimes yeah. silence is and just you know ambient noise is, is good enough um well and i think that, get, like, get that point across well that little piano theme they had the dun, dun, right. dun, 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 i think it was a very effective sort of odd but uh, you know it, it it carried the tone very well i would have liked to have seen more of that kind of thing as a soundtrack yeah. well, and I mean, the for, music for the for the music style think uh brent you've seen a little flowers of evil and steve mm -hmm. i don't know if you have no i have not 
there's an atonal like mm-hmm. theme in there that is just like insanely nails on a on a blackboard <laughs> kind of like just makes your skin crawl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and this, I didn't get that kind of skin crawly, but I got that kind of, I understand what you're doing with that specifically mm-hmm. to make I, it like yeah. this. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'd be curious to see how would you change to alter that, the music's impact to the visuals. Because mm-hmm. this is what I actually first had get got into AMVs, doing mm-hmm. AMVs, is I would actually take movies like this with soundtracks I didn't like and, like, put my own soundtracks cool. to Pink, Pink Floyd's The Wall. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well. Um, but I, but to the level of sound, actually sound, one thing that, and I don't know if it means anything at all, but I, did any of you count the church bells? Oh, I didn't count them, but I, I noticed they were... 14. 14 church uh... bells. In other words, when, when, the main, when the church bell was ringing, yeah. and it rings the time, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, so it's only supposed to go to the 12, it went up to 14. Interesting. Stop. Interesting. 14 yeah. stop. Time is broken. That could be. Mm-hmm. End of could days. be also a Buddhist reference to something, perhaps. True. If you have 108 Buddhist hells, maybe you've got 14 somethings. Or maybe back when Oshi made this, he knew that I was alive, and he goes, "Let's tick Steve off by doing this." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll just screw around with it. Because oh, yeah. I think what is it? How many okay. stations of the cross are there? There's 12 stations of the cross. Oh, I didn't think. Mm-hmm. Think. Uh, so so four, 14 would be there. Uh, what? There are 14 precepts of engaged Buddhism. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Now we're Love getting, it. We're good. Love it. Um, and the number of the counting shall be 14. 15 shall thou not count, neither 13. Um, yeah, no, totally. Um, uh, that, that's, that's very interesting. Huh. As, as you had said earlier, it's pregnant with many, many things. <laughs> yeah. Many, many things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, and, and I hear that about the, uh, the, the, this overall, like the soundtrack and, and, and the, 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 the tone it takes. Well, and, and Matt's saying, you know, there's such a thing as too abstract. Um, you know, you can go so, um, abstract and symbolic that nothing makes sense uh and there's just you know no pattern whatsoever um and i think that's one of the problems it's, it's one of the interesting things about soundtracks to me actually specifically is that if the soundtrack doesn't really match not much what you're trying to do but the soundtrack can be distracting even if it's doing what it's supposed to be doing as opposed to you know working with you to put you into the mood um and it definitely points with the soundtrack where i was like I, I could mute this right now. I really could. I, I wouldn't mind. So, <laughs> cool. Was there anything well, else? I, I I can't I can't ever really typically think of any soundtracks that I've heard that I haven't associated what I'm hearing, whether I like it or not. I mean, mm. again, Flowers of Evil. That it somebody you know it wasn't like you had this creation of some sort then mm. somebody else in the production department said uh we've got like this uh idol group that's uh on on contract uh what's this show about can we put this in there you know it's like i usually associate that the music is particularly staged for that show for something mm. and i my you know whether it horrifies me or whether i love the hell out of it mm. it's my responsibility to try and figure out that part of it. it's like why in the hell did you do that in that sure. spot why does this sound like this what are you mm-hmm. trying to evoke from me mm-hmm. i know what i'm looking at but like we know about all you know like good horror films if you cut the music score a horror film is not horrifying mm-hmm. because you have very little anticipation of what's coming up the jump scare mm-hmm. if you don't have music leading up to that to build your anxiety mm-hmm. so watching you know angel's egg it's just like what do you what, what do you <laughs> pulling out of me for this yeah. what am i looking visually what at right yeah, like, what do you want from me let me go you know and, and i'm just and the thought just occurred to me that somebody owns this soundtrack out there oh yeah probably somebody says listen to this this, and plays this, it at a party. this is somebody's favorite soundtrack <laughs> plays it at a party <laughs> boy wouldn't that be a captain buzzkill moment hey everybody you're enjoying this party out of my you're liking, yeah you're, you're liking all this here listen to this soundtrack <laughs> 
hey, is it is it is it 7 p.m. already? Ah, uh, time to go home. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, no, I, and, but, um, okay, I'm not gonna go off uh, track just yet. Anything else you guys wanted to, to talk about? <laughs> think, Jose? We'll, we'll save that for a little bit later. Um, it's actually, I would actually encourage people to watch it. Mm-hmm. Um, it, despite joking around and, and the, the, the frustration of how there, there is, you really are going to have to come at it and on your own and, figure it out on your own and and the best part of it is i think of this movie is being able to turn around and going you know like what we did here tonight which is going what in god's name do you think that was about mm-hmm. you know and just having a good discussion about that and you know and you know these an- anime or movies or things like that would make you that make you kind of just talk about it or think about it or some way shape or form kind of does a purpose like that and that's i usually think is a good thing so mm-hmm. i i would encourage people to watch it i do think it's a beautiful anime um, you, the soundtrack to me serves a purpose at the very beginning, but then it just feels like I'm being hammered mm. out, throughout the rest of it. But as a soundtrack aside, um, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth the time. Mm-hmm. It's always good seeing an art house kind of film thing that uh, that's not you know the super popular center of attention at the moment because right. it, it gives you right. an appreciation yeah. for the medium. Mm-hmm. Well put. Yeah, um, yeah I, I, I approach Angel's Egg as kind of like going to a museum and looking at a painting. Right. You can look at a painting and say, oh, look, it's a dude in a room moving on, uh, you know, um, right. uh, or... that's Van Gogh's self-portrait friend. <laughs> dude in a room. Whatever. You know? <laughs> you know, pretty much. Um, but like if you sit down and like look at it and think about it and pay attention to it, you can pull out some interesting things about it. Um, you know, you can I, I think there's there's fun to be had. There, there's not just I, fun's the wrong word. Fun's the <laughs> wrong word for Angel's Egg. Um, <laughs> and there is um, intellectual meat you know, in Angel's Egg. There, there's stuff you can you can definitely extract right. out of this that is uh, uh, worth the time. I definitely agree. Well, it is it is fun because we're sitting here having this discussion. This is a fun discussion mm-hmm. about a, a film that Siskel and Ebert said it was a laugh riot from start to finish. <laughs> <laughs> um. You know what I mean? It's like, and that's the fun part is like watching this, dissecting it in, you know, ingesting what parts of it, looking stuff up about what you think some of the, uh, what was it? The, the egg metaphor, you can find an egg metaphor in the Kojiki and the Nihon Shoki. Oh, interesting. Which are two Japanese sort of ancient myth creation kind of idea Mm -hmm. uh, books that I, I remember, you know, studying in, Japanese culture class and university mm. those I remember seeing those names before but when I started looking into Angel's Egg I'm like oh there we go <laughs> now, now starting, uh, things are starting to make some connections here exactly so, and that's fun exactly yeah uh, it's a it's a fascinating thing definitely is cool so what was the thing I wanted to mention um, it was totally off topic oh yeah um, there is a horror movie called Rock and Roll Nightmare, or The Edge of Hell. Um, okay. And okay. the soundtrack, can, so the, the premise is a uh, hair metal band uh, goes to a small farmhouse out in the middle of nowhere on sort of a band retreat to compose their next album. And of course, they get picked off one by one by demons. Um, the soundtrack consists of either extremely cheesy hair metal band songs that they are playing or are on the radio, but are all clearly from this band, or uh, 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 <laughs> for like you know minutes in a scene. That's the entire. So it's like. Uh, um, wow. it, it, it is a perfectly terrible movie in the sense that it is just all of these wonderfully cheesy things all thrown together into one movie. And it has um, a legendary ending. I will just put it that way. Uh, Was it made yeah. by a trauma, trauma team from the old... Uh, <laughs> no, but it is, it is of that level. Toxic Avengers movie. Yeah. Um, oh, boy. Oh, yeah. It's, wow. it's not quite the... Um, 
uh, sort of intentionally gross level. out. Yeah, you know. Um, right. But it's it's definitely um, uh, not Hollywood standard. Um, it, it it's on Rift Tracks. It was all put on good. one credit card. <laughs> <laughs> all one credit card with a thousand dollar balance. Yeah, it, it is. Wow. It's one of the best Rift Tracks ever. Um, just because it is perfect fodder for, for riffing. Uh, it, it's great fun. But, you know, when we were talking about the, the soundtrack, the Angel Sag, I was like, where am I, what, what am I, thinking? oh, yeah, that, that is a soundtrack to Rock and Roll Nightmare. The Edge of Hell, Rock Edge and Roll Nightmare. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. John Micklethor is the, uh, the the main actor and singer and all that in, in, in that movie. Is that it's, a name I should know? I have no idea. I just remember the name. <laughs> I've never like, heard it before. Just, just. John Micklethor, like if that is not the the most amazing, clearly made up name, um, <laughs> it's pretty impressive. Um, cool. All right, that will do it. I think for our discussion of Angel's Egg. Thank you guys very much.